another night of protests, but this time the protests happened right outside the home of Seattle's mayor. Demonstrators marched to Jenny Durkin's house this evening. King 5's Tony Black is live in Seattle with more on what the demonstrators had to say. Tony, good evening. Good evening to you, Vanessa. Yeah, earlier there was a large crowd of people that were here at Magnuson Park, and we'll show you some video of that earlier today so you can get a size. But we'll look at the size of the crowd that was there. An organizer who you will hear from shortly says that this demonstration started at Magnuson, then was joined by another group that had been marching near UW. Council member Shama Sawant was also here at this rally and spoke to the crowd, listing their demands and calling on Mayor Durkin to resign. Now, it is not clear when the decision was made or how it was made to make their way towards the mayor's home, but here's an organizer explaining the reason for doing so. We came down to Jenny Durkin's mansion uh, to bring the demands of the movement and of the families who have been impacted by police violence uh, to her doorstep as she seems to not be able to hear our demands any other way. Now, Mayor Durkin's office gave us this statement, which I will read part of it to you now, saying, quote, Mayor Durkin and her family are in the state program to keep their address confidential because of the death threats mostly related to her work as Seattle's U.S. attorney under President Obama. Instead of working to make true change, Council Member Sawant continues to choose political stunts. Tonight, she did so without the regard for the safety of the mayor and her family. The mayor was not even home. She was working at City Hall. Seattle can and should peacefully demonstrate but should not put families and children at risk. And also in that statement, they mentioned that Mayor Durkin will continue to work with the leaders of the black community. For now here in Seattle, I'm Tony Black, King 5 News. Tony, thank you. Well, this morning, barricades were supposed to be removed from the area known as the Capitol Hill Organized Protest or the CHOP, but tonight those barriers are still there. Here's King 5's Sebastian Robertson. Good evening. Tomorrow marks three full weeks since protesters moved into what's called the CHOP. They've been successful in holding the ground and uh, keeping SPD out. This morning, those barricades were supposed to be gone, but they're still there. The crowds are dwindling. CHOP is in the movement that once drew thousands to the streets of Capitol Hill. We are here to dismantle systemic racism. But Sunday, the holdouts and cement barricades are a seemingly unmovable reminder that this story isn't over. CHOP is an idea. You can take that idea around this country and then around this world because people want to hear you. It is an idea, and ideas can't be killed. Anchored by the abandoned East Precinct, protesters have held six city blocks for nearly three weeks, a mostly peaceful protest that was at times marred by violence. But the violence creates a different narrative where then people who are in authority have to look at it differently. Three shootings in four days brought a change in tone from Seattle's mayor and police chief. This after two people were wounded, a teenager shot and killed. It's time for people to go home. The city tried to pull down barricades Friday morning, but protesters, this person, stopped crews from moving in. She says she's going to, on Sunday morning, remove all barricades except for the ones that outline the footprint of the East Precinct. Sunday morning came and went. The barricades are still standing. The protesters holding strong to their demands, calling for a 50% defunding of police. They want that money redirected to social services and want all protesters released from jail. Many neighbors feel they're caught in the middle. It seems like we're supposed to sacrifice our peace of mind, our safety for this movement. And I don't think that's fair to ask of us. And we have reached out today to the city to see if there's any updated plans on what happens to the CHOP next. We have yet to hear back. We also know that the police chief said she'd be moving officers back into the East Precinct again. No timeline on that either. In Seattle, Sebastian Robertson, King 5 News. In Bellevue today, people gathered at the Prayer for Justice rally. Organizers say this was a way for people to show their support for black lives and use their voices to speak out against racial injustice. 